Hello, welcome to the video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain simple concepts of biology and the techniques in a time less than 5 minutes or so. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button and let's start. Today's technique is about methods to study DNA protein interaction. It is important because many of the cases, let's say you have identified a protein and you think that protein interacts with DNA, possibly that protein is a transcription factor. So how do you prove it or how do you do experiments to prove your hypothesis that that protein interacts with the DNA? A simplest method is electrophoretic mobility shift assay. We all know if we load DNA on a gel, it would move and based on its size. So let's say we have our sample where we, so we have only DNA, we have only purified DNA and we run it and that has a characteristic band. Now let's say our protein of interest is interacting with the DNA. So definitely if it is interacting the DNA, the mobility on the gel would be less. So that shift in mobility could be understood that the understood as a readout of that the protein is interacting with the target DNA. So this is one of the easiest way by which can we by, by we, which we can understand DNA protein interaction. Other thing is DNA's footprinting assay. It turns out like when we walk on the sand on the seashore. So we leave our footprint. Similarly, when RNA polymerase or any DNA binding protein is binding to the DNA, it is leaving a footprint there. And what is the footprint and how it is read? So let's say this is the DNA and you chop the DNA in fragments and then you do an autoradiogram. And let's say the DNA is bound to a protein which is possibly a transcription factor or DNA interacting protein, then you would get different size of fragments, but you don't get some amount of fragments because that region is protected by the binding of the DNA. That's why DNAs one cannot cleave those regions and those size fragment characteristic fragments are absent. Then we can backtrack and tell that the protein is interacting with the DNA at that particular region and it has left a footprint but all these methods are pretty qualitative so one quantitative method is chromatin immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing which would tell us that what exact sequence is our protein of interest is binding so in order to do, do that so this method use dna protein interaction study and it can be used in in vitro or in vivo it used antibody coated beads and let's say we know that this particular protein we have an antibody against this particular protein so we would use the antibody to pull down the protein and we would see what dna region is pulled down along with that particular protein so let's say there are multiple type of uh, this particular protein of interest could interact with one part of the genome or maybe it can interact with multiple different part of the genome so once we pull it down using an antibody coated bead, then whatever region it interacts with all comes down in a pull down fraction. And from the pull down fraction, we can isolate the DNA. And after that, what we can do is we can run a sequencing experiment. That would tell us that what sequence are associated with that. So the sequencing machine readout would tell us which specific sequence are enriched in that pull down fraction. So what came uh, along with that pulled down protein of interest what sequences came out and the enrichment peaks would tell us what sequences that DNA probably bind to if we don't have huge amount of funding for do a sequencing because sequencing experiments are costly then one can also do pull down and after that taking the DNA out and performing qPCR to understand whether out of many genes our protein bind to one of our gene of interest or not. So it's a candidate approach. That means our protein is possibly can bind to many of the targets. But at this moment, I wanted to know that this particular protein of interest, whether it is binding to my gene of interest that I'm studying at. So that could be used using uh, chip qPCR. So these are all the techniques, possible techniques by which DNA protein interaction could be measured. 
I hope this video was informative. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.